Daddy Squared. Gay Dad Saved the World. A daily dose of gay dads on the front lines of the global pandemic. With Alex McGann and Jan Dick. So, I made ice cream. I did. Yes. Uh, this is the Gay Dads podcast, uh, Gay Dads Save the World. But the thing is, I made ice cream. But tell everybody, why did you make ice cream? I mean, how the idea came about? Because this is so cute and romantic. The outcome, so cute. The outcome less so. Not so cute less and not so. so romantic. Anyway, I... Why no. is it... Yes, why is it not cute and romantic? I was reading the New York frickin' Times in the morning, yes. and there was a recipe that allowed you to make ice cream without an ice cream maker. And I said to myself, my husband loves chocolate mint or mint ice cream. I'm going to make him some with these two hands. So I did. Showing the hands to the microphone. I did show the hands to the microphone. Now look, they said you get heavy cream, you get some mint extract, you get uh, some sugar, you get a pinch of salt, which was a surprise to me. Mm -hmm. You put it all in like a mason jar, a glass jar, and you shake that for five minutes solid. By the way, shake a glass jar for five minutes solid. It's a workout. And then after that, you put it in the freezer and, you know, three hours later, miraculously, you have ice cream. So I did it. Before I got it out of the freezer, my husband had already made like six faces of disgust that I would, I don't know, try to make ice cream for him. And he, he was, came into it with a negative point of view. Okay, yesterday he introduced the ice cream for the first time. <clears throat> so? And, uh, and he told me to try to go and taste it. And it wasn't bad. So I had a, I had a taste. And then, and it was evening, so I had for dinner... Six cookies and then ice cream cone that I found on the freezer in the freezer, and I think that was that was what my is dinner. The, so, in other words, you you rather than enjoying my magnificent mint ice cream that I made for you, you you threw it all away. You cheated on me with somebody else's ice cream. Fine, I will always uh, lick your ice cream. Oh my god. Today, Alex, um, I actually changed the name of this episode. It was supposed to be called The Military Hospital Nurse, and we changed it to Gay Dads and the Seven Kids. Oh, like the dwarves. Exactly. Oh my God. Um, so <laughs> I'm sure they've so, heard that before, oh but okay. Uh, so uh, the thing is that we this interview is pre-recorded, and I have to say that we it was not expected that these guys that we're going you're going to hear right now are having seven kids. Yeah. And Alex and I just cannot handle this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that there might be an edit that Jan does where he cuts out the long, silent period after they said that they had seven kids and we had to pick ourselves up off the floor. <laughs> yeah, so we're calling uh, San Antonio David and Elio. David is a teacher and Elio is a military hospital nurse. Um, and yeah, they adopted seven kids. It's just incredible. And, and look... I, it's funny, you know, as much as the two kids that we have is completely overwhelming sometimes, I'll admit that after I got time to think about it a little bit, I said to myself, that would be so wild. Like, all right, I, I don't think I could handle it, but it's such a cool concept that suddenly you have an army. You have an army who, yeah. who live with you, who, how do they drive around? What kind of a vehicle do they have? I'm, oh I'm, I mean, do they, do they drive a school bus to and no, from the International like, House of Pancakes? That's what I, I, I wanted to focus on, on that very fact, just because, you know, we, we have no idea how, yeah. how, how life like this can be. It's incredible. Um, okay, so uh, let's call them. All right, let's do it. Okay. Okay, I'm Elio, okay. and I'm David. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. So uh, tell us a little bit about your work and how has it changed during the pandemic? Uh, well, I'm a uh, registered nurse, and I work in surgery. Mm -hmm. I have been um, a nurse for five years. I was a surgical tech um, in the operating room for uh, six years prior to that. So I have been in the OR since 2009. Um, now with the pandemic, it has changed um, just to a way that uh, I work in a level one uh, trauma center. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty big hospital. We have about 28 to 30 ORs. Wow. So 
right now we're only running five ORs, only pretty much just uh, emergencies and like essential procedures. And is that a military hospital? Yes. So why is yes. it, how, what, kind, what sort of patients do you have? Uh, well, we do pretty much everything. Um, we do a lot of uh, patients that have like, uh, they come in the ambulance for car wrecks and stuff like that. Right. I have, to I have to assume that the amount of trauma has probably dropped dramatically with everybody being locked down. There isn't as much that can go wrong, car accidents and stuff like that. Is, is that true? Uh, yes, it actually went down a little bit. Um, it's picking up right now, like uh, little by little, we're running more rooms. Uh -huh. So next week, we're going to start running 18 rooms. Now that everything's opening up, we're uh, opening more rooms too. And David, you're a teacher, right? Uh, well, I'm just a fourth grade teacher, um, but we had went into spring break for the week. And then um, that weekend prior to us returning, they had told us that, we weren't going to be returning. Mm -hmm. So from that point on, it's been nothing but um, trying to adjust to like the distance learning and right. help the kids try to adjust to that also because a lot of this stuff was new to, to students to, to try to grasp. It's a lower income um, neighborhood, the school. Right. So a lot of the, the students didn't have that experience with technology at home and so forth. So it's just a learning process for them to try to, to get on there and do their work. Um, the district did provide um, technology for them to use during this pandemic. So again, they have it at home. They're, they were offered Wi-Fi also. Wow. So now it's just trying to figure out the ropes of it and, and wow. turning in assignments. Well, let's switch gears and tell us a little bit about what you got at home. Tell us about your family. Okay, well, we have seven kids. Um, they range from ages. Well, yesterday was, we had a, the baby she turned to. Um, so we have a two-year-old to ten-year-old at home. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. I just had to I just had to pull myself up off the floor. Just a minute. You have seven kids. People tell wow. us that we're crazy all the time, and like, what were we thinking? But Nonsense. it's just something that you it's get amazing. to you know, like uh, yeah. What, how how did it like? How did it start? Like, did you adopted all of them at once? What? How is it? Uh, yes, uh, they're a, a sibling group. Uh, initially there were only six of them and then um, when they came to our home there was only six but then uh, there was another one on the way that it kind of was a surprise too wow. and um, well it's a long story but uh, they've been with us uh, since the beginning of 2018 mm -hmm. and then uh, we finally adopted them last year wow uh, it was this that's yes. that's incredible. What do you, what do you do? So, what are you doing with all of them while during this lockdown? How do you keep lockdown? all of them? Yeah, how do you keep all of them occupied? Well, I guess because since I work in a military facility, I'm kind of a military with them. So I teach. No, I'm just kidding. Excellent. I love it. <laughs> Tell us more because family. we want to do the same thing with our kids. <laughs> no, um, at, the, at the beginning it was a little hard, you know, trying to teach him discipline and. Uh, some kind of manners and how to behave. And, you know, especially with the older kids, uh, you have that gap that you kind of have only, you know, like six to eight years that you were not with them. You have to catch up with them, trying to teach them everything that they're supposed to know versus when you actually raise a kid since they're born, it's completely different. Right. You have time to adjust. They, have, they also can adjust to you. Yeah. But um, the kids are really good. They are really helpful, really respectful. And, um, um, we just have communication with them. A lot of people say that we, when we um, go places, they're like, wow, these kids are really well behaved. Like y'all are all doing an awesome job, but we don't see it because it's just something natural to us. You know? Yeah. Uh, well, we don't know because our children are lunatics, but okay, fine. <laughs> and we have only two. <laughs> it feels like seven, but it's two. Um, so how is it for you guys in San Antonio, Texas? How, how is it uh, as far as the acceptance for uh, gay dads there? We actually, I don't think we know that many people that with kids because from before, like with our group of people, our friends, I guess we were the only ones who decided to move on, move forward with mm -hmm. getting a family and all this. Well, um, there are some people that we've, you know, we've met through like Facebook groups that live, there's like about maybe two families or three families that live in, oh, yeah. I'm sure there's more in, in San Antonio, but 
we just know of like about two families in, in San Antonio through that Facebook group. But overall, like us going out to like public places with the children, I don't notice anybody giving us bad looks. Like we go to the park with them, we go to restaurants, but we used to. <laughs> well, yeah, we used yeah. to, but um, I don't. We would we would get ugly looks. But we, no, I, I probably was so busy that I didn't notice. Right. Yeah, with seven, right. we have to be preoccupied with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, and I actually think that uh, being too busy to notice is a wonderful piece of advice for people who are who are dealing with you know, casual homophobia. Yeah. We want to switch to our last and, uh, and uh, definitely most important question, which is we'd, we'd like you guys to share with us the most disgusting thing you have eaten in the last several weeks. You go first. Um, I don't think it would be, I don't know. I guess it's disgusting to me because late at night, I just want to, you know, when the kids are awake, I mean, we don't get me wrong. We feed them, but like at night when we're, alone I try to save like a little piece of like something sweet because I don't want to bombard them with like sweets all the time so right. I feel bad I feel like the the hypocrite that says you can't eat sweets but then I want to eat it so at night it's like I, I received a lot of these teacher appreciation gifts that have a lot of goodies in it so at night when we're in bed I just start I just start like chowing down on all that that sweet stuff yeah 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 <laughs> um, I have gained, gained a lot of weight probably like 10 pounds 7 to 8 uh, 10 pounds uh, these days because, um, you know, at work, all the cafeterias are closed right. and we have, a, we have a big cafeteria in the basement and then we have like little cafeterias and shops in other places of the hospital. Yep. Um, so everything's closed, right? We have to take our own lunch, but, um, luckily the housekeepers, they love me at work and most of them are like Hispanics ladies and you know, they're like your mom. They always want to feed you <laughs> and then I come get something oh no i'm good thank you no no, no. here you get some more and then they serve me all the time so uh, sometimes i feel bad but at the same time i kind of get upset like okay that's enough i don't want to eat no more but it's good actually <laughs> they cook good so i'm getting a lot of weight and then david he he doesn't get bad he eats whatever he wants and he doesn't gain weight oh well david so i get upset with him. yeah you should david's a bastard that's completely unacceptable yeah, because he comes at night and we're already in bed and he, I want to snack on something. He comes out with ice cream or some cookies or, or some chips and with queso. I was like, oh, and I feel so bad, but I cannot say no because I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. And of course, thank you for what both of you are doing during this uh, pandemic. Well, thank you for well, taking sure. your time. Also. Thank you for uh, recognizing uh, people like us. Uh, um, it's not like we're looking for any kind of recognition, but sometimes it feels good that people know, you know, they kind of give the time to say thank you for all the te teachers that are working from home and trying to figure out how to teach their kids. And I see it because I see David, how much he cares about his students and then trying to teach our kids here at home too. Right. Yeah. So um, it's a lot of work that he does. Like the thing with me as a nurse, once I leave work, that's it. I don't bring work home. Right. You know, I clock out and everything stays over there and I come home to my family. Right. right. But with him, Which is not easy too with seven kids. Yeah, with him, he's a teacher 24-7. Sometimes there's like 9 p.m. and parents send him a text. Wow. And then he replies. Wow. So I was like, yeah, you need to have a limit that you're only available for certain hours. And then yeah. he goes, you have to understand that some parents work and this is the only time they have, they have available to help their kids. Right, yeah. right. So, it's so hard and challenging for, for all of us. Right. Well, thank you guys again you. and take care of yourselves. Be well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. That's great.